Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper. So happy to be with you guys here today, and I'm trying something brand new that I've never done before. I'm going to try and do a vinyl wrap on my car. Not the whole car, I'm just going to try and do the trim and see how it goes. I've never worked with it before. So the first thing you need to learn to do when you do this is to make sure you tighten down the screw on your tripod that keeps it from tilting up to the ceiling where people can see where you installed your M3 headers for extra performance. I really wanted to start with some small pieces first, and these come off the car very easily so I could put them on my desk and work on them. I'd used some flat black, some uh, chassis black to paint them before, and it held up relatively well, but over the year since I've done it, they've got a couple little dings and chips in them, and they weren't looking very good anymore. So I got them off the car. There are some hex heads, really easy to take off, and then I had to go back through and sand that off to make it a perfectly smooth surface because you will see little imperfections through the vinyl. So I did get one shot of it there. I don't know if you'd see it, but I got this from shadowlinetrim.com. I am not sponsored by them or anything. I've just heard of them. I decided to try and use them. I'm using their gloss vinyl wrap for this one. I wanted to wrap more than just the trim that was around my windows, so I figured that if I got a thicker piece, this is the four inch stuff, that I could cut it in half for most of the stuff I needed to wrap and basically get twice the mileage out of it that I would out of the three inch thick stuff. I was a little intimidated going into this to try this project just because I was used to paint where you throw it down once and if it's wrong you have to sand it off and it's a really big process to get it right. Uh, this turned out to be pretty easy to do. You could see me repositioning it, taking it up and putting it back down. Uh, the only thing you can't really recover from is if you stretch it. And if you stretch it, then it's, you know, it's stretched, it's in there. But other than that, you could pick it up and put it down quite a few times. Um, it really seems to seal down when you put some pressure on top of it. So after I got the grills done, I decided the next easiest part was to go to the long pieces that were along the bottom of the window trim. I cut the piece of vinyl in half again because I didn't need the whole width of it, and then I cut it to length so it would be easier to handle when I was taking it over to the car. When I first started out with my approach, what I did was I secured one edge down with some tape, and then I started taking the backing off and sticking it down along the edge of it, just kind of going all the way down the length. That way I could come back and trim the edges later. I started out um, actually using a razor blade here, and that worked pretty well. You want to make sure that you cut inside the void. Um, you do not want to scratch your paint, so you want to aim it into the void in between your trim and the paint. So you come back, you do it along the bottom, it'll tear off pretty easily along there, come back along the top. Credit card's really helpful. I'm using the Zoo, Zoo Pass, extra points for that. Um, but you get that and then you leave a little extra and then you can just push that underneath there and it it just absolutely disappears. You can see the part I did there was actually pretty challenging. I didn't get it quite right. If you get really close up, you can see. But I had to take the backing off and then shimmy it up under the rear view mirrors. I suppose a person could take off those covers. Um, I honestly, you won't notice it unless you get super close to it and are looking for it in that case. So I didn't think it was worth the trouble, but if you're a perfectionist, you probably would want to take off that cover on the bottom there. After that, it was really a matter of a little more trimming and a little bit more stuffing it back behind the trim to keep that exposed edge away. So I'm doing one side at a time, and I did this partly because I wanted to see what it looked like. I figured if I did one side, I could swap back and forth to the other, see if I liked it or not. Um, and the other thing was this top part looked like it was going to be a little bit challenging, so I wanted to make sure that I could do it okay before I did it to both sides and wasted all the material. So I went up there and I measured it. I used the actual vinyl this time instead of a measuring tape so it would curve, and then I cut it in half so I could use one for the other side after I got this one down. So on most cars, there's going to be a spot where your trim is going to have a natural break in it because it's not going to be one piece. I figured it would be quite a bit easier to work with a piece of vinyl tape that wasn't as long. Um, so I cut it up to that edge and then I started the curve around to the front. The other reason I saved this top piece until later was that it curves under quite a bit, it rolls under quite a bit, so when you open the doors you can see chrome underneath. So not only is there a curve along the top that's pretty gentle, but there's also a curve around the entire part. So basically I went through and I, I got one surface stuck down really well, and then I came through and just had quite a bit of patience stretching it along the inside radius of that, and it, it really sat down pretty well. This next part did almost stump me. 
So this part, it gets really thick. It gets probably, I mean, if you measure it from one radius to the other, probably about four inches thick in spots. So I kept trying to do one piece from where I had made that cut all the way down to the bottom and I could not get it to stretch that much. I didn't try a heat gun. Um, but yeah, I tried a couple things off camera. They didn't work. I came back. I decided to do two more pieces of it. I'm glad I did. The seam between these two pieces is no more noticeable than the seam that you got in the factory chrome going from one piece to the other, and I think it was worth it just for ease of install. So this is all the chrome from the factory, and initially I really wasn't sure if I was going to like it blacked out or not, so that's one of the reasons I just blacked out one side first to see if it was worth the trouble of going to the other side. Um, it's a pretty low cost of entry. It was 40 bucks for all the vinyl, 30, 30 or 40 bucks for all the vinyl to do this. So I wasn't out a whole lot if I just wanted to tear out one side. But after seeing them side by side, I realized I really did like it blacked out quite a bit better. Since I decided to do both sides, again, I had to do a little bit of rinse and repeat. This is me coming back. I measured, I'm cutting it in half again so I can go through and get a couple of pieces for the bottom most trim piece on the driver's side. There were a couple of lessons I learned coming from the first side to the second side. You can see how I'm holding this. I'm pulling it back on one side. I'm just using the vinyl to stick itself down instead of tape and uh, pulling the backing back with one hand. On that second side, you can see I wasn't getting as stressed out about bubbles because I knew you could just pull it back up and lay it back down and get most of them out of there pretty easily. The other big difference in how I did the second side was instead of using a razor blade, um, which worked fine, but I was a little bit worried about hurting my paint. I started using the credit card to go through there, and if you pushed at it hard enough with the credit card, it would do two things at once. It would wrap that bottom under, and it would also give it a little bit of a, just enough of a score line so you could pull it off right afterwards. Then you could go back over the top and stuff it in. It was a quicker operation. So there's some details that aren't super critical to the look of the car but when you open the door um, these did take a little bit more finesse to get you want to find where the edge of it is a little crevice you can shove it into then i did go back and use the razor blade to score that and pull it out so it looked a lot more finished whenever you open the door and could actually see it which out with how much time i spent on the other side of this i had decided that i was going to live with a couple of overlap lines they're really not very easy to see unless you're looking for them um, so i decided to get the majority of the curve in this one piece and even so this is still is a really tight curve so it took me quite a while to get in there and to get everything bent perfectly and stretched out just right uh, take your time do a little bit of the radius and work your way in then you can go back in there and trim it after the main shape is in there, I went ahead because there was a big gap in here and I cut it with the razor blade, went back through and just rounded it over with my fingernail to finish it off. The inside edge was a little bit trickier because there's a little bit of weather stripping. I just cut it a little bit over the weather stripping and then went back in with my nail and stuffed it under there. Um, there's a few, there's one place in there that you can still see a little bit of shiny, but again, it was good enough for me. So with that, the last part I had to finish in the car was this uh, this little 12 inch stretch in here and that was simple enough to do, or it looked like it was going to be anyway, but again, this turned out to have <laughs> quite a bit more curve to it than it looked. So I used a longer piece there. I trimmed it off on the edges where I wanted the overhangs to be. This one I ended up having to make a few relief cuts in there. So I got the top where I wanted it to be. I used a lot of pressure along the whole top and down along the bottom. Then I came back in with the, the razor blade just to notch it. So it made it a little bit easier to curve in there. It is worth mentioning that you should clean everything off really well. I went through and used acetone uh, just in case to get any wax or anything that was on there off of there. I would also go and use a tack cloth that you can get at any auto parts store for a couple of bucks just to get any dust off of there. Especially with the grills where I did all that sanding, there's a few pieces where I trapped some particulate matter in there that didn't need to be in there. You can see a few close-ups here of where I overlap them. If you didn't want to do this, you could always come back and take a razor along the edge, that edge there, and just peel off one layer of vinyl. A um, little bit riskier, so I decided to just leave it like that, and I'm happy with the results. So after going through all the whole installation, having it on the car for a while, it really changed the look of the car a lot more than I thought it would. 
it was also pretty easy to get on there. I mean, it was time consuming, but it was pretty forgiving of errors and mistakes. And it's cheap enough that if you get extra, it's not a big deal to peel it back up and put some back on there. Had it for about six months. It's really held up as well as I could think of. Nothing started peeling. Everything seems all good. So I'd recommend it. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my video. Please like and subscribe. Check back for more updates on car stuff, woodworking, and whatever else I'm up to. But I will see you guys next time. Thanks.